taken from the Ultimate Killer Collection. By Stuart Dandel. Ed Gain. The Butcher of Plainfield. Edward Theodore Gain came into the world on August 8, 1906. Originally born in La Crosse, Wisconsin, the family moved pretty soon after Ed's birth to a farm outside Plainfield. Although young Ed's father, George Gain, worked as a tanner alongside his own farm work, it was Ed Gain's mother who would be the dominant parent. Ruling the roost as matriarch, Augusta Gain was devoutly religious and was often heard sermonizing about the demons of premarital sex. Although as an aside, Ed would later recall that her admonishment of masturbation was not as strong. In 1940, Ed Gain's father died, followed four years later by Gain's elder brother, Henry, who lost his life whilst fighting a marsh fire. Later that year was probably when the catalyst for crime came, as Ed Gain's mother, burdened by the stress, had a stroke. This was not to be the end of the Gain's ill-fated luck as it was followed by a fatal seizure in 1945, brought on by an argument with one of her neighbors. After this tragic event, Ed nailed his mother's bedroom door shut and retreated into his life. During his childhood, Ed had never been a very masculine boy and was rather ambiguous about his nature. Even going so far as to consider amputating his penis several times, and also considering transsexual surgery. As this was a new procedure at the time though, it would be risky and costly, with Ed deciding to find other ways of turning female, preferably on a part-time basis. Around this time of sexual awakening, Weird Old Daddy as he was affectionately known in the community, began to develop an unhealthy interest in women's genitals and the female anatomy. Picking up his knowledge from pornographic magazines, encyclopedias, anatomy books, pulp horror novels, and various other scraps wherever he could find them. Another of his more prominent interests was his fascination with the atrocious Nazi medical experiments upon the Jews. It wasn't long after these macabre interests took hold, that the deeply disturbed Ed Gain, began to cruise to far-flung Wisconsin cemeteries. Unfortunately, he wasn't there for moonlit liaisons. He was there to dig up and desecrate female corpses. Taking the corpses home for dissection, Ed would keep the parts he could find uses for. Sex organs, livers, hearts, heads, and intestines, were all saved. With which he made various infamous articles, such as a belt made of nipples, and a lamp stand from a human foot. After removing the parts that interested him, Ed would also use some family learned tanning skills and flay the skin. He would often wear the skin and dance salaciously around the farmhouse, deriving great pleasure from the act, possibly fantasizing about himself becoming female. This frightening and grotesque series of events, would eventually inspire Thomas Harris with the character Buffalo Bill from the movie, The Silence of the Lambs. Gain was notably fascinated with the female genitals that he had removed, often keeping them in underwear, playing and fondling them. He even went so far as to wearing them when he was dancing around the house. On the more ceremonial occasions as Gain would call them, he would dance under the full moon wearing a full skin vest, complete with breasts, female genitals over his own, and a human scalp with face. During this time it is of no surprise to learn that Ed Gain became a recluse. His farm was now neglected and decaying, and he shunned visitors away from his property. It seemed that Gain's explorations with his feminine side were all he had, the only things that really kept him content. It was chasing this contentment that would soon become a nightmare for the local populace, as Gain's fascination with the female form would become an obsession that led to murder. It was December the 8th, 1954, and Mary Hogan a local tavern manager had disappeared. When authorities arrived at the scene, they found various bits of incriminating evidence that would suggest the 51-year-old hadn't left voluntarily. A pool of blood was on the floor, a spent .32 cartridge was also at the scene, and a chair was overturned as if there was a scuffle. 
Foul play was the logical assumption and Ed Gain was suspected briefly, but then discarded. A move not celebrated in hindsight. Three years later, on November 16, 1957, another local lady disappeared from her place of work. Bernice Warden, 58, had vanished in a strikingly similar circumstance to Mary Hogan before her. A trail of blood on the floor led out of the back of the shop to where the victim struck was last seen. During the investigation, Warden's son recalled that Ed Gain had asked his mother out on a date. Also, he had mentioned on the day that she had disappeared that he needed antifreeze, a receipt for antifreeze was found inside the store. With this information in hand, local law enforcement decided to pay their new prime suspect a visit. What they would find there would haunt them for the rest of their natural lives. The incredible amount of gruesome and grotesque discoveries on Gaines' property was staggering. The main evidence that would guarantee him murder conviction was in the woodshed, where the headless and naked body of Bernice Worden was hung upside down from a meat hook. Her intestines and head were found in a box on the farm, and her heart was upon a plate in the dining room possibly awaiting Ed's next meal time. The list of macabre items on Gaines' farm, reads like a house of horrors wanted list, ten skins from human heads were found preserved, a chair upholstered in human skin, lampshades made from human flesh pulled taut, a belt fashioned from nipples, a soup bowl fashioned from a skull, a table propped upon human shin bones, the four posts on Ed Gaines' bed were topped with skulls, a shoebox was found full of female genitals, a human head hung on the wall with nine death masks, and the fridge was full of human organs. Also discovered were faces stuffed with paper, and the human skin memory vest, that Gain confessed to wearing and impersonating his own mother, stating to the detectives that it gave him an immeasurable thrill. This would influence another famous fictional character in Norman, from Alfred Hitchcock's film, Psycho. Overall, there were the remains of 15 bodies found scattered around Ed Gaines' house of horrors, although he himself was unsure of how many were from the act of murder. With excavations underway at Gaines' farm, the man himself was being interviewed by investigators at Watoma County Jailhouse. At first Ed was silent, saying nothing to the detectives for the first day. However, the next morning he had a change of heart and started telling investigators the grisly story of how Bernice Worden met her untimely fate, and also of how he had amassed the body parts that were strewn all over the farm. Although Gain had some difficulty in remembering some of the details, he was able to recall dragging Bernice Worden's body to his truck, and taking it along with the cash register back to his house. He did not however, Recall shooting Emsworden in the head with his rifle, as was stated as the cause of death on the autopsy report. During the many hours of questioning it was clear that Ed Gain had no concept of the devastation of his crimes. He showed no duress or emotion when talking of the murders or his grave robberies, often appearing cheerful. This would appear to show complete disassociation with his actions. During the interrogation process it had been assumed, and not without considerable circumstantial evidence, that Gain had been murdering and butchering women on a regular basis. Though it was during his confessions that he made what seemed to be an incredible claim, he had murdered two women and two women only, he kept the preserved peeled off face from one. All the rest of the body parts had come from grave robbing. Ed revealed that over the course of 12 years after his mother had died, he had been systematically robbing graves of their owners, gaining a sense of companionship with his new friends, he could not achieve amongst the living. Officially linked to the two murders of Bernice Worden and Mary Hogan, Ed was also suspected of murdering his brother. Alongside these factors, two fresh vaginas were found in his house that could not be accounted for. The theoretical cause for Gain's condition has been attributed to his upbringing and the unhealthy relationship he had with his mother. The conflict he felt from his natural desire for women, and the chastity his mother preached, would eventually lead to full-blown psychosis. On 16 January, 
1958, Edward Theodore Gain was found to be insane and was sent off to Central State Hospital, Wisconsin. Just over a decade later and Ed Gain was summoned to trial. Even though he was classed as mentally fit to stand, he was eventually convicted as criminally insane. Thus he was sent back to Central State Hospital in Wisconsin until 1978, when he was moved to Mendota Mental Health Institute. It was there that he eventually passed away in 1984, he was 77 years old. His body was buried next to his beloved mother Augusta in Plainfield Cemetery, not far from the poor soul's graves he used to pilfer.